All right. The remaining women in the outline that fall under that term, female abolitionist, are for white women. You have Lucretia Mott, Sarah and Angelina Grimke, and Harriet Beecher Stowe. Uh, the film club is going to do an excellent job with the Grimke sisters and Harriet Beecher Stowe, so I just wanted to fill in a little bit of extra um, context for that. So the key thing I want to tell you about Lucretia Mott is she will be a founding member of the American Anti-Slavery Society. Now, when this group is formed, she's there, she's one of the members, but she says she didn't sign her name because she didn't think it would be proper, right? And, and we've seen this before, that eh, there's this line uh, in using the culture of domesticity, and she feared that maybe um, signing her name for this document might not be proper. So what some women did is then they formed their own anti-slavery um, societies. And one society in Massachusetts actually nearly disbanded because um, some women of color wanted to join the anti-slavery society. And the white women in the anti-slavery society didn't want the black women as part of their group. So think about that for a moment. It seems a little contradictory, right, that this uh, group of women in Massachusetts are uh, talking about trying to end slavery, but then they aren't going to let black women in their group. And this highlights a point about abolitionists. This isn't the case with um, most of the women that are on your outline, but it does highlight a case with uh, a point with abolitionists that you could be an abolitionist and you could still very much be a racist. You might be against slavery, but that didn't mean that you believed that black people were equal. Um, so ultimately what ended up happening is this uh, group of Massachusetts decided, well, they'd let black women join their group, but they would only be respectable black women, um, their words, and because they didn't want them, and, and I don't have this quote in front of me because my, um, that school, my office, but uh, the quote is something along the lines of they didn't want these women to feel like they were like on an equal footing with uh, the white women in the group, but they let respectable women in, respectable black women. So again, kind of highlights that contradiction uh, of abolitionist. And then um, for the Grumpke sisters, uh, one thing the film clip's gonna note is that they're gonna come into, uh, they're gonna be criticized for speaking to so-called promiscuous audiences. That's an audience made up of uh, both men and women. And you've got a fabulous document on your outline from um, Sarah Grumpke, uh, I love, this part here. She says, um, bum, 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 where is it? Um, men and women were created equal, and created equals in capital letters. They are both moral and accountable beings. Whatever is right for man to do is right for woman. I love that. It's such a great line. So, so uh, be sure and look at that before you watch that film clip. And then um, Harriet Beecher Stowe is mentioned briefly in the textbook, and I, I've got the page numbers there uh, in the module for you uh, that you can look at. But again, the, the clip does a really fantastic job. Uh, the other thing to think about with Harriet Beecher Stowe is we could put her um, in that genre of uh, sentimental fiction, sentimental novelist. Now, her novel is a little different because it's got this underlying sort of like, um, like cause to it in terms of trying to get people uh, to end slavery, but it still falls within that genre. And then note too, when, uh, when you're watching that clip, how she very much is using the call to domesticity, very much writing as a mother, trying to get other women to think about what this means as a mother uh, to be enslaved. Okay, I think I hit all my main points. If you've got any questions, you can uh, leave them for me in the discussion board. Take care.